Hey guys, it's Noah, and today is Thursday, May 22nd, 2014, and I'm here. Ash is going to make his video tomorrow, so I decided to make mine tonight. But I want to let you guys know that I've been gone for about two weeks or so. I gave myself a concussion, and I spent a whole bunch of time in the ER. Uh, I was diagnosed with post-concussion syndrome, so if any of you guys have ever had a concussion, you kind of know what I was going through. This isn't my first one. Hopefully it's my last, because after this one, I... I'm going to be really careful with my head now. Um, but yeah, so I've been missing because I've been spending a lot of time just laying down in a very quiet and dark room. But I'm at home now, so this is uh, the room. The, not the room that I grew up in, but the house that I grew up in. So this is the downstairs room. It was my playroom when I was a kid, so it's got like really bright colors and like it's painted. And uh, yeah, today we're talking about binding safety. So I want to make a video, make sure you guys... Definitely have my perspective on that. I've been binding since my grade 12 year in high school, so over three years. Uh, I started with an ace bandage, as a lot of us have, and if there's anything that I can portray in this video, it's please, for the love of God, do not use an ace bandage to bind. If you need help or you can't find a binder and you're watching this video, contact me. I will do my best to hook you up, find someone who might have a binder, uh, message some of the FTM Facebook groups and see if anybody has anything available for you. But please, please, please. Please do not use an ace bandage. I personally bruised a couple of my ribs. There's a fly, sorry. There's tons of bugs here. And it drives me fucking nuts. Um, but yeah, please, please do not use an ace bandage. There's so many safer ways to bind and so many cheap ways to bind nowadays. You can get a binder off of eBay for like 10, 11 bucks with shipping. It's free. So like, if you can't afford an underworks binder or a Les Love, a Les Love boat binder or like any of the fancy, like, t Kingdom binders, anything like that, there are ways to bind nowadays. Um, if you can't do that, double sports bras, smaller sports bras, those work way better. Please never use an ace bandage. That's my rant on that. Okay, so number two, my second thing is, is please don't go swimming in your binder this summer. Um, I know that sounds, like, really bad, because I know a lot of people can't afford to buy a swimming binder, but, um... I felt my lungs, like, compress so much and, like, breathing underwater and stuff like that, like, when I was trying to breathe inside myself, and, like, I just, my lungs froze up when I jumped in Blake with a binder on last summer, and, um, it's not something that I'd ever recommend to anybody. I know guys say, oh, it's fine, oh, it's fine, but you really shouldn't do it. You really should not do it. You should not go swimming in a binder that's not meant to be in the water, because it's really constricting. Um, I'd recommend to anybody that can afford it to get the swimming binder from Underworks, or to get a swimming binder. There's other ones online if you don't want to go through Underworks, but Underworks is ace and it works really well. Um, if you want to check out how that fits, I have a video on my personal channel, um, an unboxing from this one, and a try top. So, um, if anything, I really want you guys to make sure that you're binding safely and you're being really, really careful with your bodies, because remember that this is your body, and even though you might not be comfortable with the way it is now, one day in the future you're going to look back and wish that you hadn't bound your chest so much because the compression might change the results of your top surgery. You're going to wish that you're taking better care of your bones, you're taking better care of your body. It's the same thing if you're trans, it's the same thing if you're anybody. You really need to take care of yourself, you need to eat the right things, you need to make sure that you're binding safely and not putting any extra pressure on your ribs, your spine, anything like that. Make sure that you're not binding for more than 8 hours a day if you guys can help it because you remember that these things are really, really tight. They're really, really tight. And you're back. Um, I know there's actually stories of people or women who wear corsets or wear corsets so much that their back didn't have support without the corset. And they, like, she, the women, they couldn't like, stand up straight or properly function without a corset on. Um, I hope that nothing like that happens with binders, but make sure you guys are taking them off and not sleeping in them. Um, make sure that you are not over-abusing the use on your body because one day you're going to wish that you hadn't. Um, I noticed where it can get really, really bad. But there's other ways, layers with your friends during the summer if you can't bind. Um, I know if anybody wants to ask G, I know that he's not been binding. Um, he wasn't binding because he had a back problem. So I'm sure if you went to his tumbler and asked him like other or alternative ways to bind or ways to layer and dress, um, I'm sure he could give you tons and tons of tips if you don't feel like asking me or putting any comments down below. So I just want to make sure you guys are doing everything safe because honestly, I've hurt myself binding. Um, I have scars on my legs because I wore too small of a size of a 997 for a long time. Um, I've only ever worn a small and an extra small, and that was at my heaviest I was wearing a small still. So um, I have scars on the outside of my legs from the binder rolling up and compressing. So I just want to make sure you guys are all being really safe. Uh, I love you guys. 
If you have any questions, leave them down below for sure. Shoot me a message, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.